Hello, welcome, I'm Simuke, I'm a full-time YouTuber and games critic. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game 2. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, so I'm actually going to refer to it as Mez 2 from now on. Is this review for you? Well, if you're looking for ultimate realism in your gaming, then yes, this review is meant for you. If, however, you get upset and cannot embrace the challenge when games are too difficult or too demanding, then no, this is likely not the right review for you. That being said, everyone is welcome here and I do respect and appreciate all thoughts and opinions, so I do encourage you to leave me feedback in the comments section below. All the thrills of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross 2018 Championship Live the life of a pro. Put yourself to the test in the compound, tackle challenges, manage your events, and attract new sponsors to earn fame and unlock new content. So this game's developed by Milestone. It was released on the 8th of February 2019, and on Steam at least, it's $39.99. Now that's massively too high a price for me. It's a really high price on Steam, it always is. There's a link in the description below which gives me a small kickback and will actually save you about 50% of the price of that. So if you're interested in this game, definitely go and check that out. Now obviously Milestone are well famous for the Ride series and the MotoGP series and basically anything motorbike related. The new key game features include the upgraded track editor and some significant amount of customization. The quick review is this. When it comes to milestone games, I always prepare to be disappointed because history has taught me that this is the right approach. This time round though, it's quite a bit different. I actually genuinely like this game. There is a lot of really good and positive aspects to it. I might even start a career for my channel, but I'm not going to recommend it outright because of two major issues. Well two major issues and a few little annoyances. So let's start with the good. Mez 2 introduces new ground elements like sand, and it does a lot to improve on the existing ones, like mud. Mez 2 has also introduced a few new tutorial-esque features, like flow, which is intended to help new players to understand the right rhythm for a track, and they have improved bike handling and generally given everything a decent lick of paint. There's a lot to like here, it looks excellent. And for once, the audio is not half bad, and the in-game music, I have to say, is great. The handling of the bike is almost perfect, more on that in a second. Plus there's the career, the bikes and the tracks, they're all pretty fleshed out and quite impressive. So now I'm going to take the opportunity to highlight the issues and explain why I'm not wholeheartedly recommending this game to you. I am a hardcore sim fan, I am looking for ultimate realism, so I race in first person view and on realistic physics. I have the AI set to the hardest difficulty settings and this all includes clutch and manual gears. But this is not a simulator, ok, that's fine. But this game does not even allow you to play realistically. In fact, this game appears to punish you if you even try and play realistically. For example, the game always resets my view to third person in every single event, which means I have to quickly change my camera view before the race starts. I found that the clutch is absolutely pointless except for at the start of the race, and I would argue that the gears aren't much better either. The AI is terrible, and I mean really bad. Imagine, if you will, every single opponent doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. The same line, the same angle of turn and exit speed. If you happen to be where this block of AI wants to be, then expect to be pushed, and I do mean literally slid across the track, until you eventually wipe out. And then there are the resets, oh, M, G. Just remove them. In fact, remove the resets and improve the AI, and I will happily, wholeheartedly, recommend this game. 
although I would want a few other little fixes applied too. In a nutshell, this is the reason why I won't recommend the game. It's the AI and it's the resets. They absolutely ruin the game so much because without them, the gameplay and the flow is actually extremely good and it's pretty realistic. Okay, the physics are 100% arcade, but it certainly can pass for realistic. I would say that if you're a Supercross fan and you're happy with arcade gameplay, can cope with the frustrating AI and don't mind being reset every time you put one toe over the line, or worse still, an AI opponent knocks you off the track, then actually this is a fun game to play. However, if you want something realistic, get frustrated easily, or want a real challenge, like a real challenge, like a genuine challenge, then you should probably avoid this game. If you want a more in-depth review than this, keep watching. The UI is fairly intuitive, but my word, it looks dated. It's like a flashback to the 90s. There are some quality of life issues here, including menus not resetting after you've made a selection. So, to explain that, you move down three items in order to change the track. You pick the track, and then the menu returns back to the first menu. But rather than reset to start game, it stays on the select track option. It's a small thing, but trust me, it will annoy you. Maybe not as much as it annoys me, but it will definitely annoy you. Angel Stadium, Anaheim, California. Everything is ready for another spectacular round. There's an awful lot of bravado in this game. Perhaps that's just the American way. But I have to say, graphically, everything is captured really rather well. The bikes, the tracks, even the ground textures all look pretty darn good. Graphically, this game is right where it should be. Sure, more could be done, but at the expense of performance, I think this is spot on. And the Unreal Engine 4, or the Unreal 4 engine, has been used rather well here. Although, I did notice a missing brake lever on my bike. Is it a bug? Is it laziness? I'll let you decide. The game performs perfectly well, without any serious, considerable, noticeable stutters, lags, or any issues, even when playing on multiplayer. I did have a few tiny incidents, though. At one point, my bike spun out to infinity, and I also had one major lag spike at the start of a race when I was in between the AI pack. I'm not sure if I'm going to manage to find that footage, as I have an awful lot and we're talking about 15 seconds of footage there. Other than that, it was pretty smooth sailing all the way. I've mentioned already that the music is absolutely brilliant and the in-game audio is also pretty decent too. For the first time ever, I do not hate the audio. So, I've only seen one user-created track available online. Let's say it's very technical and the AI seemed to struggle almost as much as I did. That being said, I think the ability to create tracks is extremely positive. It's just a shame that there isn't a bigger community in order to produce them. But it's still early days, I guess. The track creation tool has apparently been improved. This isn't really my jam, so I haven't really looked at it too much. But it comes with a tutorial and, well, it's actually quite easy to use. It's quite intuitive and, um, yeah, it doesn't take too long to create new tracks. So this might be something I look at doing later. M maybe. The game does include some tutorials. They're pretty basic and they also form part of the career's training and challenges aspect. I think the inclusion of the flow meter is a good idea for kids and those who are new to the game, but really this is just something everyone will figure out by themselves, simply by racing. I guess there are some who want to be able to do better quicker and perhaps they just don't like learning in the traditional way. I am concerned though that this feature further restricts the sense of realistic physics. They have this kind of certain structure 
to jumps and they expect them and they expect you to behave in a particular way regardless of what you do as a rider. I'm not 100% sure on this one, it's just uh, a concern that I have. In terms of configuration, Milestone really have gone all out here. You can find pretty much every single brand name you can ever think of and quite a few that I've never even heard of. There are over 3,000 customizable objects here. Primarily, this is to do with the rider, helmets, gloves, goggles, uh, boots, loads of stuff. There's also some animated sort of graphically uh, enhanced boots and stuff as well. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive how much stuff they've managed to squeeze in here. The bike is pretty much the same way. We've got most of the main manufacturers here and... Uh, there's quite a lot of variation that you can apply to your bike. I'm not 100% sure that it's going to make your bike feel or behave that differently, but I haven't really uh, advanced that far into the career to unlock all this stuff and really find out. I'll, I'm open to, uh, to being corrected on that, so please, if you've got further in the game than I have and you find that that is the case, that it makes a significant difference, then just let us all know in the comments section. So when we're talking about realism and fun, uh, at, get, at times this game feels really, really realistic and it's a heck of a lot of fun. But the resets are nothing short of infuriating, not to mention the fact that you have three seconds to get back on track, but by one and a half seconds the game has already reset you. Honestly, this aspect of all my milestone games needs to be removed permanently. It's nothing but a pain in the ass. The AI does a lot to further ruin the realistic feeling that this game does offer. One line, 20 odd bikes, and you can just bugger off. This is the biggest failure of the game. It's not realistic enough because of the AI and the resets. The physics are close to being right. I mean, the, it's by no means perfect, but it's good enough to feel okay. The bikes do have some weight, the flight mechanics seem okay too. It's just uh, collisions and landings which are suspiciously lacking. As a side note, I would add that the handling is a bit hit and miss too, but overall uh, it's quite enjoyable I have to say. The game does offer quite a bit in terms of replayability. There's the career, okay, only has the 250 and 450 classes in terms of progression. But on the hardest setting, that could take a while. The career actually offers up a fairly decent structure. Points can be earned or lost by way of good riding and good results. Further points can be earned via the weekly challenges set by you or your sponsor. And then there are the PR meetings and training sessions. And I like all of this a great deal. Online multiplayer is okay, it is what it is, but don't expect to find many players online or expect there to be no AI. And because the game really encourages or it basically forces you to ride into AI riders because there's no way of avoiding them and they're constantly slamming into you, you'll find that there's a lot of kids online who think that's the way to race and they'll be slamming into you constantly. So, in a word, this game is frustrating. It's frustrating because the AI are so bad. It's frustrating because of the constant, often totally unfair and or unnecessary track resets. Sometimes the game will stop your bike dead and just put you into neutral. That probably doesn't happen unless you're using the clutch, to be fair. It's frustrating because of the repetitive bravado and the hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of transitions you're going to have to sit through between this entire BS. Just let me turn it off, please. It's frustrating because the game constantly resets my view to third person view. It's frustrating because the game has a bug where when you go to a PR event in career, you just end up with this squeal and it doesn't turn off. It does not turn off. It will stay there constantly. You can go into the menu and turn off the menu audio and just ignore it. It's not a fix, but it is a solution that works. It's frustrating because the menu itself is dated and it's not particularly well designed. Quality of life issues. It's frustrating because the clutch is pointless, except for at the start, and the gears really are not much cop either. It's frustrating because 
the throttle is not sensitive enough. There are basically two settings. It's slow and, oh shit! It's frustrating because the commentator has only got a handful of things to say and it rarely matches what is happening, so it quickly becomes annoying. It's frustrating because the game is actually really good and all of this stuff just ruins it completely. Now with everything that I've said, this might be a bit of a shocking thing to say, but actually, I really do want to play this game. I want to play a full career on hardcore mode, but I know that I'll be frustrated by the AI and the reset issues in every single race. So I think I'll hold off on this idea for now. It's a shame because this game really does get so much right. And I'm aware that there's a whole bunch of stuff I haven't mentioned. There's the compound, which is a further sort of open free play area for you to practice and test out your skills, learn your limits and understand how the game performs. There's the dynamic weather, which is unfortunately only available in the compound. And I've got to say that although the textures when wet look pretty darn good, they don't really seem to make much difference to the handling of the bike. It's my personal opinion. I guess it's just Milestone refusing to make the necessary effort required in the areas that the majority of the game's player base actually want effort to be placed. Anyways, I think this game would be truly excellent if they did the following three things. Totally remove the totally trash track reset aspect of this game and instead place in official AMA rulings, perhaps a time penalty or a disqualification if that's necessary. I would like Milestone to spend all of their available development time on improving the AI and make some more effort to have realistic physics and mechanics for each bike, rider, collision, etc. Everything else though is pretty damn near to perfect. Milestone just need to direct development in the right areas. Nothing else needs to change. So, to summarise, this game looks awesome. It actually sounds okay. In fact, it sounds better than okay. It's pretty darn good. I'd say the same thing for the bike handling. It's okay. It's pretty realistic. It's not 100% perfect in my opinion, but it's pretty damn close. And I've got to say that the great moments when you really got a good fly going on, those moments are really great, really exceptionally wonderful. But what lets this game down and what stops me from recommending this game to you, even though I desperately want to play it, are the AI, the constant track resets, the physics that I've mentioned a few times. The transitions during the bravado, they annoy me like you wouldn't believe. The audio bug that I mentioned, the menu and the UI, and the lack of realistic gameplay, the fact that you're encouraged or forced to play in an arcade manner. What I'd like to see is a total AI and UI overhaul. I'd like to see them remove the track resets and implement official rulings on track shortcuts, etc. Hopefully you found this review helpful. If you have, please hit that like button. I'm SimUK. Thank you for watching. Take care. Till next time. Bye for now.